What's up y'all, Logan Parker, Heirloom Builders. Welcome back, we're on the homestead today and we're gonna be talking about this rainwater collection system. All right, so let's zoom out real quick. This is my house. Uh, this is the roof of my house and we collect all of our domestic water that we use for the entire house and for a lot of our garden irrigation as well with this rainwater collection system right here. All the rainwater that falls on this main part of the roof falls into this gutter and drains to a single downspout which pours into this rainwater collection system. Um, this collection system filters, stores, and the overflow from that clean water storage drains down through this white PVC pipe and into a 10,000 gallon cistern that's neatly stored inside the foundation for this little red shed right here. Um, this, this storage cistern holds 10,000 gallons of clean, purified drinking water that we use for all domestic purposes, including laundry, showers, drinking water, everything that we need to survive as a small family. So when I set out to, to live on this piece of land, I decided that I needed to be able to harvest rainwater, filter it in such a way that I could drink it and I could I could drink it safely. Um, and doing a lot of research I found that a biological sand filter was the best way to filter water in a primitive way that requires minimal maintenance, raw simple materials that can be easily maintained unlike UV filtration, carbon filters, sediment filters that need to be replaced at least every year and are expensive. Sand is really cheap and easy to acquire. So I decided to build this biological sand filter that I'm gonna show you today. And it provides my whole family's drinking water supply indefinitely. Um, the system here is designed to be gravity fed so that there's also no pumps. Not only is there m minimal maintenance in this system, but we don't require pumps or electricity to ensure that we have water throughout the year, regardless of our power situation, should our, our off-grid lead acid batteries run out of power or we run out of sunshine to pump water, we will always have water. Um, so this system here, what you're seeing now, and what you'll see in this video is an aluminum jacket. It's an insulated jacket that protects the IBC totes underneath from getting UV damage. And also when water is exposed to sunlight, it tends to grow algae, which can contaminate the water and uh, clog up your system really fast. You can see each one of these, these tanks right here with the grid is a, a IBC tote. It's an international beverage container tote. It holds 300 gallons of liquid. We like using these things because they are cubicle, they have flat walls, and they're really cheap. So the, the real benefit of having flat walls and not a rounded edge tank is that you can put these bulkhead fittings and tap into the tank anywhere that you want to, essentially. You know, I've got a spigot here that is positioned high enough to where I can get a two-gallon glass jar of water filled. This is our clean water. And we can, we can connect these tanks in such a way as to create a, a collection a filtration and a storage system very easily. So quick rundown, big picture of the system is that rainwater comes off of the roof, it falls into the surge tank, which holds 300 gallons of water, and then it slowly gravity drains into this biological sand filter. This whole toad is dedicated to filtration right here. There's several different layers that work in this system. So you have coarse gravel on the bottom, which protects the more medium size, finer gravel from getting into the piping system that is down at the bottom, which is gonna collect filtered water and send it up and out into the storage tank. And then on top of that, you have several layers of finely graded sand that both filter out particulates, petroleum, viruses, and 99.7% of harmful pathogens that might be in your roof rainwater runoff. Um, you can see there's a two inch layer of water here um, that's always there. It keeps the biological film that naturally forms on the top of this sand bed alive. If it dried out, if that biological film dried out, it would die. Now keep in mind, this biological layer that forms 
is, is bacteria. It's naturally occurring bacteria that are beneficial bacteria. They eat parasitic bacteria that might be in bird poop that live inside a bird's stomach that are parasitic bacteria that make a bird sick that will also make you sick. So that naturally occurring beneficial bacteria creates a colony. It colonizes this bed of sand to create the first and most important, most effective part of this sand filtration system. So this is a slow sand filter. It filters about four gallons every 20 minutes, which is pretty slow, but over the course of a day, you can easily filter you know, hundreds of gallons of water. So this surge tank, being that this is a slow sand filter, the surge tank becomes a really important aspect of, of this whole rainwater collection system. And that's because if we had a really heavy downpour and rain was coming down faster than this filter could filter it, it's just going to overflow and we're not even going to be able to catch any of it. So what we do is we catch at least 300 gallons of it. We know that we're catching at least 300 gallons and it's going to slowly feed uh, and through a mechanical float valve. So when this, when this water gets to this height here at the top of the tank, the mechanical float valve shuts off the supply coming from this surge tank until it can filter down. And when it filters down to this level here, the mechanical float valve opens up again and lets more water from the surge tank down and through into the sand filter. So we're always gonna be able to catch 300 gallons of water and filter that into clean, purified drinking water. Um, the overflow from this clean drinking water goes through this purple pipe here and it's sent down into that cistern underneath the shed that can hold 10,000 gallons of rainwater. So we always have 300 gallons of drinking water. Any of the overflow fills up that 10,000 gallon cistern. Um, the overflow from the surge tank is piped down through this white pipe and through a diverter right down here that can be either diverted to the cistern or to a, a swale to irrigate blueberries. So this is a really effective way to collect rainwater, a lot of it, purify it to make sure that you have a year supply of water, 300 gallons of water. Every time it rains 300 gallons, you have a 300 gallon reservoir of water, even if this tank started out bone dry. Um, and to give you a little bit of perspective, you, for, this is a thousand square foot roof, roughly. We get about 600 gallons of rain water collected in a one inch rainstorm, which is a pretty typical rainstorm. Um, so we're gonna be able to fill two of these entire tanks and have two years worth of water on a typical one inch rainstorm. So this, uh, like I said, is a very primitive system that allows us to kind of set it and forget it. It's a gravity fed system that requires very minimal maintenance and requires no pumps to store the water, no complicated filtration system that needs any more than basic routine manual maintenance. No money is required to maintain this system. It is a cost-effective way to filter water to 99.7% purity for life. Uh, it serves my family well, and I hope that you find some value out of the system. I'm going to show you a little bit more about it um, and how we maintain this filtration system. And I'm going to give you an up-close look at it because it does need some maintenance, although very minimal. So here we go. It's early spring right now, it's April 20th, 2020. I unfortunately let a whole lot of pollen fall on the roof and get into our rainwater filter and it's clogging it up a little bit. So uh, let's take this lid off. There we go. So yeah, there it is. The nasty. Where's that from? That's the dirty water. That's oh. the um, surge tank water. Oh, cool. Okay, so let's let that drain. Okay, so right now we're letting the tank, the surge tank drain all of the water out of it so that we're not sending all of that dirty water through the sand filter. And I'm, gonna, I'm about to start up this pressure washer and climb up on the ladder and see if I can get in through the opening um, 
with the wand or the pressure washer to clean out that surge tank. Um, and then while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and scrape off the top layer of sand, the muck, the pollen that's, that's covering that schmutz deck. So this sand filter filters everything, but pollen tends to clog it up. So I'm gonna get all of the pollen off of that. I'm gonna pressure wash all of the pollen out of this surge tank. And um, it should be about probably an hour to do it all. By the time we pull off all the lids, um, and pressure wash it out, sweep it clean, and get it all on film for you. So I hope you uh, enjoy what you see here. I hope it's gonna work. Um, we'll see. Here we go. All right, so let's take a look in this sand filter. There's a frog in there. Where should the wire go? It should be below that pipe, that one inch outflow pipe. So it's about an inch high. So it's pretty clear that the sand filter bed is clogged with debris and pollen. So I'm gonna just kind of rake it with my fingers. All right, so I'm just stirring up this water and it's gonna be totally black and nasty. And now what we need to do is drain it. Now, we'll just kind of lightly rake the surface of the sand to where all the funk is stirred up. All right, babe, can you open up that ball valve? And watch out for the stool. It's gonna come spraying out. Oh, this. Uh huh. Get on this camera. Dad. Oh, what is this do? This drains all of the funk off. Oh, okay. See, look how dirty that water is. Yeah. We right onto the. And so we need it right onto the mushroom logs. Okay. Oh, so as that thing drains, I gotta keep my eye on it because we're only draining like three inches of water and I want it to drain all of that funk. And so sometimes since there's not like a whole lot of force pushing the water over a pretty level surface, I've gotta sweep that funk which wants to, you know, some of the bigger clumps and gooey stuff wanna settle to the bottom again and they're gonna clog it back up. So um, what we're doing here, um, just even if I'd left it alone, most of it would drain off and the filter would work, you know, 80%. But I'm going to try to get that last 20% of gunk that's going to settle on the sand floor um, just so that we don't have to do this again anytime soon. Gotcha. Alright, that is much better. We need to reconnect the pipe and the Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Sounds like it's coming in. But not like it should. Let's clean out the strainer. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. You got both those pieces. Yep. So they fit in in here. Other way. Nice. 
Okay. All right. It seems to be draining better. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so it's almost dark. And I wanted to give a quick rundown of what just happened here. Um, it's a little confusing for me since this is the, actually the first time I've had to maintain this system um, in the last three years. That's pretty amazing. Um, the yellow float valve, the mechanical float valve, has a little screen. It's shaped like a cone, and it got clogged up with funk um, that comes straight through this surge tank, and any debris that gets in um, into that surge tank goes straight through, and it gets clogged up in that mechanical float valve. Um, if that's clogged up, we don't get any water coming out of our surge tank and dropping onto our bed of sand, our biological sand filter layer. Um, so that is highly unfortunate if that thing clogs all the time um, because then we might not even know it and we've missed out a huge bunch of rain while this thing's just surge tanks just sitting there full as it can be um, so that's the one thing that we normally do is just check the surge tank periodically to make sure that it is flowing what I did um, a couple years ago after that ball valve screen got clogged two or three times I had enough I was like there's no way I'm gonna sit here and do this after every three or four storms um, there's just too much junk still getting through and so I said enough of that the first thing that I did to solve the problem of the, the mechanical float valve strainer getting clogged all the time was I put a bunch of pea gravel right in front of the drain sump and the top IBC tote that is the surge tank so that any of that funk that just gets through the original filtration doesn't go through that two inch ball valve at the bottom travel through the one inch pipe and into the mechanical float valve and clog that strainer up pretty quickly. Um, that pea gravel stops it. Now, what I didn't want to do is have that gravel constantly getting flushed through and clogging up the pipes itself. So what I did was I put a stainless steel screen, like basically like a diaper in front of that two inch valve <clears throat> to protect it from the pea gravel so the pea gravel doesn't wash through it. Um, and it really worked out super well because um, it's been two years, almost three years, since I've actually had to wash that mechanical float valve strainer, um, which is amazing. So for three years, basically no maintenance. All I've had to do was take that screen on the vortex filter, take it to the kitchen sink, and rinse it out. It's been as easy as that. So if, if I've got about an hour's worth of maintenance in three years, aside from routine kitchen spraying out every couple weeks or month, that's easy. That's about as easy as it gets. So anyway, um, I wanted to show you the system and some of the maintenance that we've had to do so far to it. It's pretty minimal. Um, so I'm super satisfied that we've been able to create a system that needs light routine maintenance once a month and about an hour maintenance schedule after about two or three years. Um, so I'd say overall it's a success. Um, the filtration system is always the weak link. It's the one that's going to require the maintenance the most. And on this system that I designed, I just wanted to show you how little maintenance that actually is. So just basically proof in the pudding. Here it is. We had to do very little maintenance over time. So if you like this video, smash that like button and make sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos on how to build a sustainable homestead off the grid and how to build a better home. As always, y'all, thanks for watching. Until the next one, peace out.